Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Uh, I talk about it a lot, but usually kind of on a, a superficial level uh, because it's, it's, it's a deep subject. And, and the subject I'm talking about is substantial and insubstantial and comparing that to yin and yang. And these are um, super important concepts. And you know, regarding substantial and insubstantial, you know, when I wrote uh, Taiji Chuan Through the Western Gate, I, in chapter three, I talk about it uh, directly and, and at some length. And the, because um, it's really so important, it's something that uh, Yong Chen Fu uh, said was the most important thing to consider about Taiji Chuan. Uh, his uncle, Yang Ban Hao, you know, he said, if you don't know insubstantial and substantial, your Kung Fu is wasted. And so, and then uh, the father of, um, uh, the founder of uh, uh, Wu Stao, Wu Hao Stao, uh, Liu Xu Yang, Xie, Liu, Liao Yu Shang, there we go. Um, he, uh, he said that, that the you must clearly distinguish between insubstantial and substantial that every point, every point everywhere has its own insubstantial and substantial and that throughout the universe there is only the one insubstantial and substantial. So it's like something, it's like a cosmic principle, you know, to, uh, to him and it is to me as well. Cause it, to me, it is, it provides a way of talking about I, what I consider to be the deepest metaphysical, spiritual ideas, and it's a way of communicating them. And uh, so understanding that is super important, but it's also important on an incredibly practical level to be able to actually understand your Taiji Tran and be able to execute it. So if I may, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. We'll do an exercise in a bit to, um, to actually bring that into, into the body, but it's, a, it's really a key point. So the, uh, the Chinese term uh, for, in, for insubstantial is shu or xu, which is uh, xu, and the, for substantial, it's shu or xi, um, and that's, uh, so basically it means you know, fullness or emptiness, being, non-being, um, form and void. There's all kinds of ways of thinking about it or just more density versus less density. So when you think about it as, you know, it's usually translated as substantial and insubstantial. And when you think about substantiality, it's, what does that mean? It's what is substance? And this is something that I'm not gonna speak about as a broad philosophical con uh, concept, because that's something that is thousands of books have been written on the topic, and I uh, I don't want to go into those particular waters right now. I want to talk about it as regards our practice, and so that what that means is what is substance? It's it's how much stuff is present, and Substantial and insubstantial are always, always, always a statement of relationship. They're always comparative. And so you're always looking at substantial compared to what? Insubstantial compared to what? And when you do that, when you identify that, then you're able to see clear what is what you're doing. Uh, and... Um, Ordinarily, you know, it's it's taught, you know, at the at the beginner level as which is your weighted leg. You know, if you if you're standing and your your weight is in your left leg, then that is the the substantial leg, and the right leg is the insubstantial one. And that's that's a, a practical way of, of thinking about it, but it's also you know, a really superficial idea as well, because it. Um, it doesn't really get down to the, the you know, what makes the, uh, the art work. 
And that is the, you know, the substantiality of my, my right arm, say, is, you know, I can see there's meat and bones and, and there's, there's a form there. And when I look at that, that's like, oh, okay, that's, that's the substance. That is the density. That's its density, its fixity, it's how much stuff is present. So there's a lot of stuff there. The air in which this, this arm is moving is nowhere near as dense, nowhere near as stuck or fixed or, or, or as much stuff. So it is by comparison to my hand, to my arm, it is less substantial or it is what we say insubstantial. So by comparison, but only by comparison, because if we take that air and we look at the, you know, the, the molecules of the air and uh, we amplify that and we get the air moving really, really fast, let's say we get it moving 100 miles an hour, then suddenly that air, which before was really insubstantial, is now pretty substantial. It's got a lot of stuff there that it makes it uh, have an impact. So we have to think about, okay, compared to what? So the, you know, the air that is moving in a hurricane is a lot more substantial than the air that is sitting here in my, my, uh, my living room right now. So always by comparison, it's always a statement of a relationship. And consequently, you can think of the, it as the two terms as mutually arising. That is, they, you can only have substantial if you have insubstantial because you got need something to compare it against. And the same thing is true of yin and yang because yin and yang are ways of talking about the way that stuff either expands or contracts. If we're talking about yang, we're talking about the expansive or reaching the extending quality of, of of stuff. The yin is the condensing, contracting, retreating, receptive part aspect of stuff. Again, both of these are comparative terms. They are a statement of relationship. So the question that came up is, are they the same terms? You know, do we, are we talking about the the same thing when we're talking about insubstantial substantial, particularly as regards to a tai chi form? And the answer is no. They are they're talking about two different things. One is talking about how much stuff is present, talking about how much being is is present in anything that we're anything we're discussing. The other thing is talking about whether the stuff is expanding or contracting. So when we're talking about yin and yang, it's always about stuff, whatever the stuff may be. It may, even the stuff may be thoughts, you know, they are emotions could be, could, could be, have their own substantiality. Words can have their own substantiality. They can be yang words or yin words, depending on whether they open or close. And so we have that. So when we're talking about a um, application, we look and say, okay, compared to what? So it's you're all, it's always, always, always shifting. So anytime you think about, you know, is that substantial or insubstantial, it's going to shift depending on what you're talking about and how you're looking at the thing you're talking about. Nothing is ever permanently substantial or insubstantial. So it always, you have to say, compared to what? So in this case, let's say, if I were to reach out with my right arm, it is substantial in that it is, there is, it is the, uh, that which is more, uh, uh, more present, more stuff than my left hand, which I'm not moving. It just sort of, my left hand is hanging out there. 
So by comparison to my left hand, it is more substantial. My left hand is more insubstantial. And, um, but if I'm pulling down with my left hand and my attention is on my left hand, then it becomes substantial. The right hand going out is yang, it's extending outward by comparison to my body. My, I'm reaching out from my body, so therefore it is yang. If the left hand is coming down and in, it is yin re, 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 uh, in relation to my body and also in relation to the other hand. So the, they're pulling uh, apart. And so this is the left hand coming down and in, that's yin. But if I'm, if it is getting my awareness, my attention, it becomes the substantial hand. So I hope you're getting the idea here that it is entirely dependent on your relationship to the thing that you're talking about. That it's not an objective thing. It is something that is regarding your relationship to it. And, um, and it's directly, it directly correlates to how much attention that you're giving it. So um, if I stand up and I allow my body to be supported primarily by my left leg, it becomes the substantial leg. If I bring that down into my right leg, and it's now the, the primary substantial leg or uh, supporting leg. It's, it is substantial. It is where I'm getting, I'm feeling my support there. My attention goes to that. However, if I reach out with my, with my left foot as if to kick, it has become substantial because that's where my attention is now, even though my right leg has become you know, it's, it's still the supporter. The left foot coming out, that's yang. If I pull it back in, that's yin. So the, it's, it's, a, it's constantly in flux. And it is driven by your attention. And this is what makes it really cool and really useful, I find, in, in, in any kung fu. That is... Wherever I'm bringing my attention, wherever I'm directing my attention, that becomes substantial. And with that, it takes on qualities that are not present in the less substantial aspect, whatever that may be. So if my I'm bringing my Pong Jin to my right arm, that takes on qualities because I am bringing my attention to that, to that right arm. It's becoming, it's becoming more full. And, uh, ah, you know, it, it, it has stuff. And um, if I just stick my arm out there and I'm just, it just like something I do, but I'm not really directing my awareness there. If I'm not directing attention, then it's, it has much less substance. It has much less stuff. And consequently, it's not as useful as if I, hmm, if I bring my awareness there, if I bring my intention, my focus on, on that. So uh, I'd like to shift and see if there anybody has any Questions or comments needed? Any clarifications needed? Anything I've said so far? Any disagreements? Yes, Richard. Um, so I'm gathering that substantiality doesn't have to do with density. Um, um, water is not necessarily less substantial than lead. It doesn't have to do with that. It does. It does have something to do with density but only as it, as it relates to you. 
with in, in and that's in the context of the conversation we're having now. It shifts when we're talking about universal, you know, talking about universal objective state. So water, if we're saying that, oh yeah, yeah, water is less dense than lead, so therefore it is less substantial than lead. Just as I was saying, the air, the air of a hurricane is more substantial than the air of my living room. You know, although the air of uh, my mental hurricane, maybe not. You know, my the 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 hurricane that I imagine, if we're comparing the hurricane that I'm imagining to the actual density of the air that's that's here, then it it becomes less um, the the hurricane, my mental hurricane becomes less substantial. So that's uh it's you know, so yes, it it is does have something to do with density, but it's not uh, but it it only as it relates to you. Peter. Yeah, um, I've been. I was thinking that uh, well, a couple of things, but the um, you know, I was thinking that some of the confusion comes from um, thinking of density as like density in uh, you know just density of um, physical matter, but it's you know we, you could generalize density to be density of anything as long as you have a material in a general sense or a stuff. You know, a, a kind of stuff. And, exactly. But you also, you also need a container for for the notion of density. The container could be the body. It could be your field of awareness. It could be you know the space you're in. But and and um, so it seems like that it seems like there is a a reference or dependence on on space for you know, to have a container unless there's a, another notion of, but the, but that, but then I, 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 don't, know that, that, I don't know that that's necessarily true. Okay. Okay. But you, I can have, you, can, you can have density, you can have density of a thought form without any container but, for it. So it's a, so it's not a, would, go ahead. Would, wouldn't there be some notion of a, not a physical container, but if there, there's, if there's more stuff, it's more stuff where or in what it would be in your in your field of attention in your mind in i don't know uh so if you're calling the, that the, the, sure. yeah but my real question sort of from this is i'm wondering if it makes sense to to think that one can derive um this picture of substantial and insubstantial from the principle of the the uh chi following the attention because you know, given that the chi underlies all physical and mental phenomena, so if with more and more participatory consciousness and intention, that more chi flows in to wherever your attention is, your awareness, your attention, and um, so you know, there's more density of chi, but maybe also more density of everything that is writing on the chi or manif or you know manifesting from the chi so i'm just wondering if that if this isn't there isn't a close relationship between between the the chi following the attention and the way you're explaining um you know zhu shi uh depending on awareness attention and participation um Yes, but I think it uh, it's the, the other direction. I think first comes substantial and substantial, then chi is just oh. a another form of, of substantiality. Oh, okay. So, okay. so that so so substantiality, density in some sense, is a more fundamental notion than than chi. It's substantial and substantial. The shu sure uh, that 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 principle is more more fundamental than the chi. Well, wow. wow. so it's more about okay. being a non-being. I guess you could you could you could think of it at at at, at in those terms. That yeah, it, and you, you mentioned it, form and emptiness, which is an interesting angle. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, these are different ways of talking about substantial and insubstantial. Form has more substantiality than emptiness. So it's a you know you know um, atoms and void. You know, if we're going to Democritus, it's uh, you know it it that that principle there is 
you know, what, which is more substantial. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's a, a, a concept that's been around, you know, for a long time, but it's a, uh, you know, we're trying to bring it into a, out of the, the abstractness and into practicality. And if it just, it's just a way of talking about, about this stuff so we can actually, we can say, okay, is the chi that animates my, my hands is less substantial than the hands, you know? And so we can, we, if we had that, we were able to make that distinction, then we can see what we're, what are we focusing on? You know, and which part of the, of the equation are we focusing on in any moment? Richard. So, so does your, does your attention create the substantiality or does the substantiality draw your attention? Um, yes. <laughs> it, it, it depends, the psychologist. It, it, it's a dance. It's a dance. Okay. You know, there, you're, it's, you know, we're going back to you know, what I call participatory consciousness. It's like, right. how involved am I in the game that I'm playing? You know, and right. you know, it's it's not all just a projection of my thoughts. There are there are other people in this game, and there there's stuff in this game that that I am I am encountering, and it uh, and I'm constantly being surprised by the stuff that you know did not come out of my brain, and so it's uh, so the answer is yes. Participatory consciousness means that you are bringing your consciousness to the game. You are involved in the moment. You are doing your dance with life in a way that you are a player. You're not just, a, you're not just watching life. You're not just, you know, the uh, a leaf in the wind. You are actually playing the game. Scott, you had something. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I understand that it's important to know which is my substantial leg, which is my substantial arm, but I'm not I don't quite understand how it's the most important thing in Tai Chi to know what's substantial and what's insubstantial. Okay, um, I, um, I think that uh, that that's, that's an important question, um, and uh, to well, first of all, knowing where your attention is going is 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 a key because that is that indicates the direction of the substantiality so if you are you know we've been playing around with energies you know like say we'll we'll talk about um we recently we're talking about onjin right and it's a really woo woo kind of energy there's it's uh you know uh it's much different than the word push, you know, it, there is something that is, it's more of a waveform than a particle. And, uh, and just like a wave is, it moves through the water to generate this flow, the, the wave moves through your body to generate this flow of energy and flow of movement that comes with Anjin. But it's a really insubstantial aspect. The fact that it's more wave than form is, is, makes it you know, a very insubstantial aspect. If I'm just focusing on, on the substantial part of that, the equation, how's my body moving, then I will miss the most important part of the show. So. That's that's like one example of that. Does that make sense? That's thank you. That's actually perfect. Yes. Yeah, so Good. Doing that part out. Keith. Thanks. I'll lower that hand too. You know, my comment, Rick, is that I found that this to this point from when we started and we're half an hour in, really, really useful. All the different explanations. 
and all the different scenarios of the way it's used, I saw it as a way of directing brain energy to where your attention is, if that makes any sense. Because you, the different versions of how you explained it to me, I mean, it's a combination. I felt it as a combination of being in tune with your spatial awareness and being direct, be able to direct your mind energy. There, that is that is the element. Uh, that's the the driving force of of it, as it applies to martial arts, as it applies to our our Taiji Tran. It, it I think that it, for me, it goes way beyond that. But I'm just trying to keep it into a conversation that I can I can demonstrate and you know share with you guys and so keeping it in that in that particular little room allows uh, you know allows for a conversation to occur you know if I take it out of that room and put it into to everything that's a different conversation and one I'm I'm often happy to help to have, but it, uh, I want to keep it narrowed down for this particular thing, because this is something which is demonstrable. It's an empirical idea that it's useful in, in, in that, uh, in, in, in uh, sharing information and in sharing the way, uh, the way you move and, uh, and, uh, and uh, manifest the 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 really woo woo stuff that we're we're capable of doing with Tai Chi Chuan. Jonathan, do you have something? Yeah, if I do a ward off with my left and my yin hand, I'm feeling my yin hand, but I'm working my yin hand, but I'm feeling the effect in my left arm, right? The arm that's out, which is substantial. The actions with the yin, but the effect is th focused on, you know, the what I thought was the substantial hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do. I'm not. Okay. So it, let's say let's say it's a ward off. So okay. this hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm doing something like this, right? Right. Okay. The this is the young part. This is the business end. If it's actually right. being employed to to ward off to right. bounce someone out, whatever. Then that is the substantial part, right? This end is it's substantial by comparison because right. it, it is in support. It's the uh, it's the negative terminal on on the energetic structure, right? But in that but, moment when I actually work that yin hand to feel immediately the effect in that yang, where's the substantial and substantial in that? Uh, then if you are if you are feeling it as one whole system then the whole system has become substantial ah okay great so Thank we, you. we've we've shifted out of comparing this to this right and we're, we're comparing the whole system to the not system okay that okay, works so we, we've is. shifted the conversation <laughs> So we've okay. shifted the conversation to say oh okay this is great this is really working because I'm feeling all these these parts working together and I'm feeling yeah, yeah, a whole yeah. system. And then like, right. but by comparison to what? By comparison to all the stuff that's not in that system. And then okay. we, you know, to comparison to the, to my partner who I'm just bouncing out with my, with my Pong Jin. And uh, so then, you know, it's like, oh, what happened there? You know, but, it, it, and answer, you know, so I think, I think you've got the, the answer to, uh, to your question there. That was great, thanks. Yes. Valerie. Well, I think the simplest um, example is what you just were talking about previously with your kick. Okay, my attention is in that kicking leg and it's going out. That's young. Right. Okay, my and that's substantial. Right. As my leg withdraws, that becomes yin, but it's still substantial because that's right. where my attention is. Yes. Perfect. That sounded intelligent, did it not? It sounded, it that it sounded marvelous. It absolutely <laughs> marvelous. <laughs> Succinct, clear, coherent, perfect. That was that was exactly right. So it's so we are learning how to 
And this goes back to what Peter was talking about, how to move the chi around by using our attention, by, by using attention to direct our direct substantiality. The chi fills up because it is it has become substantial. The chi knows to go there because, and actually this kind of goes into what you were saying about container, Peter. It's like, but I, you know, if I have my arm out here like this, this is the container for the chi. So it is, it becomes substantial. So I can fill it up that way. So yes, in, the, in that sense, you're absolutely right about the, uh, about the container. It, it's whenever it goes off into the, off into the weeds that, uh, that the container idea starts to break down a little bit, but it's a, uh, but it's, it's good for, for the, uh, you know, for, for the practical aspect of what we're talking about here. Cool. Anybody else? These are all good, great, great points, everybody. Thank you. This is such an important point to me. I mean, it, it, I, I keep emphasizing it, but it's a, uh, uh, it is the key. You know, I'm not alone in this. It's a, it, it goes into the classics, you know, and it's, it's, it is the key to understanding what's going on here because it allows you to shift from the physicality being the thing, the materialism being the thing, and we are reacting to the materialism, to the material, to saying, no, no, they are partners in this, that mind and matter are partners in this, in this endeavor, and we can learn to interact by using that that um, um, conscious, what do I call it? Uh, uh, participatory consciousness. By using participatory consciousness, we are able to activate these things because we are saying, no, no, this is important right now. That hand going out or this hand going up like that, that's important. Or that leg kicking out, that's important. Why? Because I said so. And Next moment, it's gone. It's not important anymore. What's important is what I'm doing now. And uh, Peter, you had something. Yeah, it seems to me there's a really fascinating implication from what you're saying about substantial and insubstantial, if I understand. You know, when, when I kind of asked if it, if um, substantial and insubstantial didn't derive from the principle of chi following attention. You said it's the other way around that substantial insubstantial is a more fundamental principle and then then chi. And and you mentioned I think being and non-being. Uh there's is there a ghost? There is a ghost. Maria Sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> moment of non-being. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah you you mentioned being and non-being as an example of you know the um, the realm of substantial and substantial beyond chi, more fundamental to chi, and then you know the way you're teaching substantial and substantial suggests a very interesting thing about being, at least as we human beings know being, is that. Being is not the objective sort of thing that many an ontologist think. It really depends on our participation, on our participatory consciousness. Um, that's a really interesting notion. That, that being... is certainly something that I would I would agree with that statement, and it's something that uh, uh, it's it's a two beer conversation, and uh, you know takes us off into the weeds a little bit. Uh, uh, that's. But I seem and, to always and, and be, something, something we can talk about on Sunday night because that's I'm a, always, yeah. I'm always <laughs> driving off the fairway. Off. <laughs> but my, but my to keep, keeping it in, in, in the context of, of the little room we're playing in, you know, uh, we it, it the, does have those implications big, for me. Yes. But the big, the big room is in the little room. Uh, uh, so true. So true. <laughs> but it gets really confusing, man. Because then yeah. you, you go out of the big room into the little room, and then you know it's a, it's really uh, yeah it's 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 challenging. But we can navigate. We can navigate. Richard, um, 
So, so is power created by increasing substantiality? <laughs> uh, and, and insubstantiality. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> power is created by, by the dance of the two. So if you just increase substantiality, let's take a thought experiment. If I turn my body more and more into substance without the insubstantiality, you know, eventually I'm, I'm just dead. You know, I'm just a dead body because I have no there's, no, there's nothing insubstantial driving the system. There's no energy. There's no spirit. There's no intention. There's no mind. It's just mass. Right, so it's that would that would take it in the direction of materialism, which is fine, you know. At, at a lot of people, a lot of nice people are, are in that camp, but the uh, I'm talking about a, a dance between the two, between you know the insubstantial and the substantial is what determines energy. So, particularly, let's say, you know, this arm, if it's highly coherent. And it's got lots of pungent in it. Very insubstantial qualities. Is much stronger than this arm, which is just, you know, a lump. So, so you can see that that the two are partners in the in the operation in creating power. Does that make sense? Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, not not entirely. But, okay. Um, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to imagine what it is that creates that magical power. You know, what is it that we learn to increase or to improve or to be with be with that creates that, that magical great. power that the masters have? So we've shifted the conversation when you asked that question. So I like the meaning of life and riddle me this, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you shifted the question there. It's like we're talking about the substantiality of the driving force then. And, right. And, and so we want to keep it in. The driving force is insubstantial by comparison to the, for, the, 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 the matter that is being driven. And so. Okay. So if we if we keep that as the that's the relationship, then it's like will increasing the will increasing the mass increase power? Probably not. You know, you know, you know, uh, mass, right. you know, mass time velocity squared. So the velocity is an insubstantial quality, you know, and at uh, by comparison to the mass, you know, and so your the power that you're generating is uh, is much more affected by increasing the insubstantial than the substantial in that case. Okay, thank you. I'll. I'll uh, Does that I'll make ponder sense? That. I'll <laughs> ponder <laughs> that. Thank, thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, you want to do an exercise with? Oh, you, Peter, you had something else for me? Well, very well. You know, it's I can't control myself. I, this is a little bit of a big room thing, but it's a response to Richard's question. I've been thinking. You know, I'm used to the notion that. Everything meaningful has to do with the, the interrelation of the finite and the infinite. And I'm thinking that the dance of the substantial and the insubstantial may be something like the dynamic side of that interrelation of the finite and the infinite. Good segue. <laughs> Let's dance. Settle down, Keith. <laughs> No, no court gestures needed here. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yes, that, that's another way of talking about it. Yeah. But that's, uh, but yes. So, shall we, uh, shall we do something to uh, play? Let's, uh, let's, let's explore that, shall we? All right. And this can be done sitting as well as standing. If uh, for anybody who's watching who has difficulty moving around. <laughs> or even by choice, you can you can do it just sitting in your chair because you want to. But uh, let's begin getting the three pillars.
the bug. So feel the balls of your feet. So this, uh, the exercise we're going to be doing is really enhanced by getting into a super conscious state first. That way you can keep track of multiple things at once and you're not limited by your rational mind. So we're going to set the three pillars as a way of establishing our super conscious state to, to just to begin. So feel the balls of your feet. And feel the substantiality of your weight over the balls of your feet. And notice by making the balls of your feet substantial, you are making the rest of the foot less substantial. It still, it still has some substantiality, but it's less by comparison to the balls. And by keeping your attention on the balls, or some attention on the balls, some awareness on the balls of your feet, then you maintain that relationship. Reach with the crown of your head. And tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. Feel that those poles in opposition between your feet and the crown of your head. Push away from the earth as if you're pushing up against the ceiling and then ah, release down and relax the muscles in your legs and in your hips and allow yourself to get sung kwa. Your hips are releasing and you're feeling the support, the intrinsic support of your connective tissue system, which unkinks the hose and lets, you, lets the chi flow. Relax your lower back and allow your coccyx to drop to the floor. Feel it reaching to the floor. Your knees are unlocked. Reach with your elbows. Point with your index fingers and feel the energetic condition. A energetic connection, feel the energetic coherence throughout the whole system. Feel into your body, feel the chi, feel your blood, feel the circulation, feel the heat, feel the sense of fullness. Notice your mind has cleared. Gather, feel your elbows, your wrists. Reach with your wrists, bring your arms up. Reach out with the fingers. Feel that extension, the fong, F-A-N-G, fong, reaching, connecting. Feel the connection through the shoulder blades. And sink into your, into the floor. Reach with down with your elbows, bend your wrists, reach down with the wrists, reach down with the fingers. Point and reach to the floor as you feel your arms lengthening, opening the joints. The arms are still rounded, but you're still reaching. You're creating space in your shoulders and your elbows and your wrists and your fingers. Sink and reach with the wrists, reach with the elbows. Fingers are relaxed, reach the fingers now, 
Feel, you feel the space between your shoulder blades. Feel the extension, the yang energy, expansion. Push away from the earth and sink. Reach down with your elbows, your wrists, your fingers. Still reaching with the crown of your head, feeling these poles in opposition. And now we're going to put this into a form that we've done before. Slight variation, but the uh, um, as a way of exploring the uh, insubstantial and substantial. So I'm going to step out a little bit here. So here we go. So we're going to we're going to do a cloud hands. So you first want to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push away and sink into the left leg. Feel the substantiality of the left leg. Feel that that is your support right now and that's where you're feeling your, your awareness is. You have awareness extending other places as well, but that's the primary place right now. And now we're gonna shift that and as we turn and reach up with the right hand, we reach out with that, feel, feel the substantiality of your right arm since your attention is on that now. Feel that yang extension. You still have some awareness of the the support of the left leg, but your primary attention is on, on the business end here, the, the, the arm. And now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, push away a little bit, and then sung into that right claw and turn. You're reaching with that right hand. So the right hand is young and it's reaching out. And now the left hand is coming up and it's going from yin to yang. So it's reaching out now as the right hand is starting to move down. So it's moving to yin. My right leg is substantial, but when I'm, my awareness is on my arms, it's feeling that is more substantial by comparison to the leg. The right leg is more substantial by comparison to the left leg. So, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push away with the left and sink, spiraling down to the right and then turning to the left. And as you do that, your left hand is now substantial and it's also yang. Right hand is yin and insubstantial, but now it's becoming more young as we reach out. You pick up uh, the heel of the right foot and step out. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the left. So I should push away and then spiral down. So you wanna get that sung going there and then turn. Right arm is substantial. The right leg is substantial. Reach, step in. So now we're going to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push away and sink, spiral down to the right. And this time I want you to bring your attention to your left elbow as if you're reaching out with the left elbow and that becomes substantial. You're focusing on that. Scott, a couple of weeks ago, asked about what do you think about when you're doing your Tai Chi form? This is stuff you can think about. It's like, oh, what's substantial? What's insubstantial? Being able to, when you're practicing, what about clarifying what you're, what's substantial and insubstantial? 
Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push up and sink down, spiral down to the left and step out with the right foot. Feel the ball of the right, set the right knee, push away and spiral down to the left. And turn. Right arm is substantial and young. Step in. And bring your hands down. And feel into your body. Feel the chi. Feel the circulation. Feel that. Feel the power that gets generated by bringing your awareness to the substantial and the insubstantial. To separate those two, it's because of those poles in opposition that makes it work. Now step in, take a deep breath, inhale, and disappear the chi. So what we're doing is we're taking the substantiality of the chi, the stuff, and we're making it insubstantial. We're refining it and making it even less dense, which allows for the nature chi to come in and fit us up with an even less substantial energy. Great. Have a seat. Let's uh, see if anybody has any questions about this. A uh, very minor question, Rick. Um, there are a couple confusing moments because I'm I'm not mirroring you. If you say move my right arm, I move my right arm. So it's it's opposite on the screen. Do you recommend I do that or is it better if we mirror you? That's a personal choice. Um, okay, okay. I think, I think it's super important to be able to differentiate left and right at the, and be able to translate those words into your body's awareness, your proprioception. So it uh, to me, that's a way of learning to control the hemispheres of your brain being able to to make that distinction oh this is right this is left and so it you know it, mirroring is is you know is, is 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 okay if you if you um but i think being able to like make the distinction of right and left is really really important for for one's uh you know developing one's ner nervous system Anybody, anybody else? Scott? No question. I just want to say that that was perfect. Explained everything you were talking about and good stuff to practice all week. So thank you. Yay. <laughs> Yay. You, got, you got an A plus for that one. <laughs> anybody else? Any complaints? Any, <laughs> any uh, no, good. Good, we're good, we're good. Okay, uh, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, practice that. You know, do it, do it in in the uh, at, you know the cloud hands is a great great thing to do because it's constantly moving and you got you know yins and yangs and shoes and shirts happening all the time. So you, but it, it really emphasizes that. No, no, you got to pick <laughs> pick a pick something to compare because it's nothing is staying the same moment by moment, everything is changing. So it's like, it's like freeze the moment and say, yes, this substantial, insubstantial, good. Check, move on. Good. Jonathan. I said, you know, reading in Cheng, uh, Lowenthal's book on Cheng Man Ching, he said he never stood double weighted. He always was on like one leg or the other, substantial, even when he's just standing around. It was like this constant awareness what's substantial. 
because I think you kind of lose that when you're double weighted a bit, right? It's a little harder to to have that awareness somewhat. Well, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that um, uh, it's it, it, it's a statement. I, I don't, I wouldn't take that literally. I think it, you know, because even in his form, there are points where he's double weighted. Right for a moment, yeah, yeah. No, so it's don't don't take it to extremes. It's like it's it's a it's a good suggestion, but it's not a uh, it's not a uh, it's not a fixed thing. It's because uh, he's he's double weighted a lot in 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 the form. So yeah, yeah, Scott. Oh, I'm just wondering if um, he's kind of talking about that as sort of an exercise, right? Because you're never going to be exactly fifty fifty. Right, so you could do the exercise and see which one's forty nine, which one's fifty one. If you, and that would be a good way to practice your sensitivity, right? I guess, yeah, yeah. I would say it better just decide which one you want, and 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 take it there. You know, pick a pick a side, and uh, and and that way you are, you're not just an observer of your body, but you're actually driving the bus, and uh, that way you get you know your body and your mind, you're, you're driving the bus. You're the one that's, that's saying, yeah, yeah, my right leg is the substantial leg right now. And, and I like it. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and take it from there. Cool. Okay. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.